Hello, my name's Nathan, and you're about to watch one of our Sunday gatherings. We're praying that it will encourage you right where you're at. And if you'd like more information about us, please visit us online at publicchurch.com or connect with us on social media at a public church. Thanks for watching. So this Christmas season, we not only celebrate the birth of Jesus, we celebrate a Jesus who is still alive and who is the God of the impossible. But maybe you came in tonight and it just sounds like what we've just discussed and what we just read is just a, a fairy tale, a legend that somebody made up. Maybe you believed at one point and you're just kind of holding on to get through the Christmas season because when you needed it most, God didn't show up for you. But once the new year rolls in, you are rolling out on faith. Perhaps you're here and you're just kind of going through the motions. You've heard this story. You've read it so many times. It's just, it's just another story. Or maybe you believe that God can do the impossible, but you just have accepted that the breakthroughs ran out before God got to you. And as you face the bleak and hopeless situations in your life, you're like, ah, for you, for you, maybe God will come through for you, but he's just not gonna come through for me. So wherever we are this Christmas season, I just wanna encourage you with this. The Jesus who entered the world as a baby and forever changed it, wants to enter our world and forever change us. So a question for us this Christmas Eve is will we invite him in? Will we invite him to do the impossible? And our campus pastor, Nathan Eaton, he's done that. He has invited God to do the impossible in his life. And so he and I are gonna talk about his story. And I'm convinced that this story is gonna meet us where we are and change us this Christmas Eve. So could you guys welcome Nathan up? So Nathan, we'll start with a, a simple question um, that I'm sure no one can relate to. And have you ever had a bad church experience? No, why, why is that even a question? I mean, yeah. I mean, duh. <laughs> people don't hurt people, right? No, that especially never not in church. Right. right, so, um, yeah, you know, in fact. Can I, can I, one of our core values is authenticity, yes. if you want to revisit okay. that question. All right, so let's, let's try it again. Yes, um, so I was, I was in a, a ministry, you know, position for several years, and I guess the, to put it as easily as I can, it was, it was unhealthy. You know, there was a season of being hurt and scarred. And, you know, thankfully when we go through those moments, God doesn't let us go through them alone. Uh, God brings family, uh, people who become family into your lives, uh, who walk through it with you. Thankfully, you know, he does that. Some of them are actually here with us tonight. And so, so we went through a season that just, you know, was very hurtful and, and hard. And so God released us to step away and actually uh, enter into a, a sabbatical season. And it took about two days from my, the last day I was on staff to come to the conclusion, I don't know that I ever want to step foot in a church again, and I definitely don't want to be on a church staff. <laughs> yeah. um, thankfully, that has changed. Uh, <laughs> you see him here. This um, is first time here, guys. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So, so yeah, um, so yeah, it was a difficult time, and you know, that, that we experienced. Yeah, there. that's good. You know, and the reality is, over the course of these past three years, did you ever have a moment where you just thought about, Man, I'm just gonna give up on God? Because honestly, you had some reasons to do that. You know, I think there are moments that, that crosses your mind when you start to put your expectations on God of mm. what you think he needs to do and who you think he should be in your life. Yeah. And I think um, probably early on, there was a temptation of that. The, you know, this is who I think you should who you should be God, and this is what I think you should do, and you've not done that, so maybe it would be easy just to walk away. But I, I know specifically in the past year, I've really, I've gotten away from that. You know, yeah. I, I don't even think I've been tempted to walk away or even be angry at God. But as we were processing some new circumstances this year, um, and I was in my, you know, meeting with my counselor one day, and we were talking through and trying to figure out how to respond and, and, and talk about all these things. And he asked the question, like, Nathan, are you disappointed in God? And honestly, in that moment, I felt the wind just kind of sucked out of me. Um, and I think I very timidly said, I think so. Yeah, you know, I was very scared to even say that, you know, and thinking personally, like, there have been moments in the past years where, you know, I was trying to honor God, but, you know, maybe somebody telling me they were disappointed in me, and I've carried some wounds from that, you know, this really scarred me. And so to come to God and say, God, I'm disappointed in you was very scary for me. Um, but I had been... Really, for the year before that, I'd been reading through the Psalms and really processing some things. I thought it was going to be this very, you know, positive, uplifting book, you know, in Scripture, and it's like it's raw emotional, right? Yeah, raw right. emotion that's being poured out before God. And thankfully, 
I was able to experience that because it helped me pour my emotion out before God. And, and what I, I started to see throughout, really woven throughout all scripture is that we cry out to God and God listens. You know, we see it throughout the Psalms. I, I, I cried out to the Lord and he heard. Yeah. And I started thinking through, you know, if, if he's a God who listens to us when we, we call out to him, if he, he hears us when we cry out to him, he's a God who cares. Yeah. He's a God who loves us. And, and because of that, I can approach him with where I'm at right. uh, and be honest with him, even if I don't even like that where I'm at. And so in that moment, I, I began to, to come to God and say, hey, here are the areas in my life that I thought you would show up and you haven't, and, and I'm honestly disappointed. And in that moment, as I was able to be honest with him, it was like I started taking my hands off of it. Wow. And it was like I started to trust him. You know, I was able to open my heart and open myself up to, to let him do the work and trust that, that he really did have my, my best interest at heart, even if I didn't see it. Man, that's awesome. So I hope you guys can see how you can relate because no matter where you're at, I mean, Nathan's somebody who's gone from, okay, I don't think I'll ever step foot in a church. I, I don't, definitely don't ever want to work for a church to, you know, I'm, I'm just disappointed in God to now working through that disappointment and getting to a place and trust. So throughout that, why didn't you give up on God? Like what were some of those secrets and uh, kind of things that led you through this process? Yeah, I think just going back to the fact that God listens to me, you know, and hears me. I, I think about Psalm 30, verse 2 says, Oh, Lord, my God, I cried to you for help, and you have healed me. Wow. And so as I started to cry out to God, I started to call out to him. The fact that I was just able to call out to him was healing to me. You know, to be able to go to a God who wanted to listen to me, that, that brought healing, you know, in my life. And then I think I started to just to realize that he's not a God to give up on because he doesn't owe me anything. You know, we look at, he's the, he's the creator of the universe who sent his son, Jesus, for us. You know, this miraculous birth, he, he's given me himself. He doesn't owe me that. So he certainly doesn't owe me to, like, write my story the way I would want it to be. Wow. And then I think even just, I start reflecting on how he's faithful. You know, when you look at how faithful God is, you think, well, why would I abandon that? Yeah. You know, why would I walk away from that? And he, he reveals that to me time and time again, honestly, through community, through the people he surrounds me with. And that's just a picture that he constantly reveals to us and reveals to me about his love for me and through the people that he surrounded me with. Man, I love that. And you're so encouraging to me because you've walked through seasons I think we're all gonna be in and yet you're still here and you're able to say, man, I've seen God's faithfulness through this adversity, through this struggle. And another thing that I really admired about Nathan is that as we entered this year, our prayers at church was Ephesians 3, 14 through 21. A whole lot of us prayed that once a week, every week, and um, really the heart of that prayer was this phrase, immeasurably more. And we said, God's plans are greater than our dreams and go far beyond us. And Nathan, I think we sat at a coffee shop one time and you said, I can't even dream, yeah. you know? And, and you're somebody though, even though you're at that place, even though you've been disappointed, even though you've struggled through this, you still said, okay, I'm gonna pray for God to do immeasurably more. And I'm actually gonna pray three specific things. There's three areas of my life where I'm gonna ask God to do the impossible. And I love the courage that you displayed in just praying that. So could you talk to us about those three prayers? Yeah, yeah, so we entered into 2019. We're really with three areas that God had placed on our heart to, to call out to him in prayer, to de depend on him, to trust in his work. And, and I want to be you know, quick to say, like, we don't have, Belinda and my wife and I, we don't have a name it and claim it theology. You know, it was not that at all. I think, uh, you know, Psalm 34, 7, it says, delight in the Lord, and he will give you the, de the desires of your heart. That's so misinterpreted for, by the church, I think, and, and Jesus followers. And it, a lot of times we hear that verse and we hear, you know, work hard for God and he'll give you what you want. And that's not at all what that means, you know. Um, and so what it does mean is that when we seek to follow God, when we try to honor him, when we're just, you know, following his, his leading, then our heart begins to align with his. And so as we, you know, come to this year, there was a, we were really facing a new set of dif difficult circumstances that required some new prayers. And, and so we knew that we, we wanted to call out to him in these three areas, but we knew that at any point he could answer them how he saw fit. Mm. He could answer them in his own timing yeah. and he could change our heart to something completely different. And so okay. we, we wanted to be open-handed as we approached him in these three areas. Yeah, I love that. So what was the first prayer that you guys really prayed? So, so the first one was that, um, that we would sell the house that we used to live in. So, mm. so we moved here to Cleveland, next week will be three years ago. And so we, we had our, the home uh, that where we moved from. And so we rented it for a short season and then God made it clear it was time to sell. And so we put it, the house on the market uh, in July of 2018. 
And so it had set empty for six months leading into the beginning of this year. So six months <laughs> just empty having this other house. And so coming into the year, you know, we, we were really at a place of, I mean, more than frustration. We started being scared. Um, we were, you know, it was financially difficult. I, we were at a place at that point where I was working three jobs. And so we were praying, you know, God, you know, would you, would you sell the house as quick as possible? And we had other parts to that prayer. It was, you know, sell it for the amount we need, not the amount we want, you know, <laughs> that's a scary prayer. Uh, you know, sell it for the amount we need. Um, God, would you let the person who buys it be a blessing to the community, to people that they're around, and, and would the home be a blessing to them? And so that was really, you know, our, our prayer. And so January rolled around, and it was like, it, it's still sitting. Uh, it was an impossible sale, is what yeah. it seemed like, because, you know, without going into all the, the details, you know, with the real estate stuff, is that it required a cash sale. Wow. And I don't know many people who have cash on hand just to buy a house. <laughs> I certainly did not, or I would have been calling them up and say, hey, please buy this house. <laughs> um, so it, was, it seemed like an impossible sale. So January rolled through and no sale. February rolled around, no sale. And we're getting to March and we're really desperate yeah. at this point. And um, in fact, I think like it seemed about every night at this point, we were sitting on the couch having kind of a breakdown and we would take turns. One night it would be me. I'm telling you, I ugly cry. It's bad, right? <laughs> and thankfully I have a beautiful wife that, you know, counters that, you know, so she's able to, you know, to really, you know, take care of me, and then the next night it would be her, and we, we would swap roles, and we were probably down to, you know, a few hundred dollars in the bank, and we're like, this doesn't make sense, but here, in our discussion, here's what would make sense. It would be logical for us to move back to where we come from, to sell the house here. We feel like it would, would have sold much quicker. Um, for me to have quit all three positions, which would have meant I stepped out of my role here at Public Church and find something else. Yeah. That would have made logical sense. And so we would put that out on the table, it seemed like about every night. And then very quickly, we would just experience the peace of God that says, no, no, that's not it. You know, you wait, trust, still call out to me. And we're like, okay. So we just kept doing that. And so we get to the, really the first week of April and I'm, I'm scheduled to speak here during the I Love I Can't Shake series. And I'm speaking on how lo God's love is a love you can trust. So let that one sink in for a minute. I'm like, thank you, Lord, that you're letting me live this out, you know. And so we're, we're proce I'm processing now. Obviously, Belinda's helping me process this, and we're preparing. And, and Thursday gets here, and we get an offer. We get an offer. It's a cash offer. We can walk away in two weeks with a closing. And it's half the price that we had originally listed it for. And so we're just like, okay, Lord, are you, do we accept it out of fear? Do we count? You know, so we went through this whole process, and we, we tried countering. It didn't work out, but we were able to accept the original offer and walk away. Yeah. It, wasn't, it wasn't in the timing because it had been 10 months. We were about to, you know, insurance was coming close to being dropped. Um, so it had been a long time. Um, the price wasn't what we had hoped for. Obviously, we'd been praying what we needed. And he knows what we need more than we do. Yeah. So um, it didn't work out like what we wanted, but it was what he was answering. And so we had this, you know, really huge relief that when you, he had he'd come through, he'd answered in the way he, he needed to, the way we needed him to, and the timing of it. Man, I love that. And that's so practical, just a house selling, and we all face situations like that. So thank you for sharing that. And what was you guys' second prayer for this year? So um, as I, I said earlier, I started the year working uh, three, three jobs. And so uh, we, we came into January knowing that my role would transition at some point. We, we were still working through that. And so... Um, we didn't know what it would be, um, but my prayer was that I would have one job, <laughs> you know, um, and it would be one thing that I could really focus my heart on that God could use me in because um, I felt pulled in three different areas, you know, waking up at, you know, 5, 5.30 a.m., doing one job, coming here all day, and then staying up late to the other. So I felt pulled in all these different directions, so I was really asking God to kind of streamline it so I felt like I could be used best. Um, so, you know, we were praying that that something would change and transition by April or May. Uh, I wasn't asking for that. I didn't come, I didn't approach you all and say, hey, please, please do this for me. You know, I'm not twiddling my thumbs or anything. But yeah, I did come to you and say, hey, as you know, we're praying big prayers. Here's one of the prayers that we're praying as well. And um, Mr. Optimistic here um, was not optimistic in that point. So would you like to, like to share with them how that went? Yeah, I can defend myself. Um, so... <laughs> A point of me growing as a leader is to be able to have front door conversations and just be honest. And so Nathan shares this prayer and I'd asked him to. And so I was like, okay, I've just got to walk through the front door and be honest and be like, hey, this is not possible. You know, like basically I just told him God can't do this. I know I probably shouldn't say things like that, but it's like, 
this is possible in January of 2020. We're moving towards it, like, because I didn't want him to be disappointed. I just wanted him to have realistic expectations, like, it's not going to happen this year. But January of 2020, it's where you can really move towards it. We all want it to happen. So that was my, you know, faith-filled response to uh, Nathan. I I appreciate the honesty, okay? (laughs) So (laughs) that's it. I did appreciate that. Uh, You know, so, uh, you know, he, he... deflated us a little bit now um, but he was honest and so we knew hey that's that's the reality but we're going to keep asking anyway we're just yeah. going to still call out to, uh, to God in prayer we're going to trust and so I think you know in June I began to transition into the campus uh, pastoral um, August I think was when my hours went from 15 to 30 you know, and I reaffirmed like hey this is it for the year <laughs> like you know yeah. like 30 hours at the top and so, so it, it felt like we'd conquered the world at that moment so um and then you know november i was actually able to transition to full time can we praise jesus for that not awesome um, and and the thing was that was that's about three and a half years from the moment i stepped away from the last full-time position you know i i was i didn't know what was going to happen but i was hoping for at that point three and a half weeks you know to be without a job and stuff um it was three and a half years from that moment to, to the, this one. Wow. And my faith grew through you praying that prayer and walking that journey. So thank you for challenging me, and God grew me through that. And so your, your third prayer um, is a prayer I think a lot of us can relate to because it's unanswered or depending upon your point of view, maybe God's just said, hey, not yet. Um, and we want to be careful to not just tell stories that have pretty bows on top because the reality is a lot of us live in unfinished stories, and so your story is unfinished. So could you share yeah. a little bit about this unfinished prayer this right. third yeah prayer. and I think you know all of our story really going back the last decade or even longer none of it really has been written the way I would have written it myself yeah. um and I had to get to a point of being okay with that you know the last few years um being okay with how God has written the story of our lives and and so this third one's been a little different uh, difficult to even to explain it's like you know we we moved here you know three years ago and part of the the transition of moving here was it allowed some normalcy to continue in our lives. And part of that was that it allowed, allowed Belinda to still stay where she's at uh, currently in her job. And so, you know, we've been praying through, you know, what does that look like for us long term? You know, is that continue? Because she, she's in the car about an hour and a half a day. And that's, you know, that might not seem very long. I mean, thankfully, she's a podcast junkie. So she listens, you know, all the podcasts as she's driving back and forth. But, you know, we're, we've been praying about, you know, because we look at ministry as we're in this together. We're partners, we're, in a, we're a team, and uh, what does that look like for us long term? And we, we don't have clarity there. We don't know. Uh, it may continue where we're at, the way we're doing things. Uh, so that's kind of that unfinished part that you know, we've been praying and just asking God to, to reveal, and he just really just has us waiting right now, and that's, we're growing to be okay with that. You know, um, It doesn't mean that um, it does, it's not scary at times, because it is, but we're just trying to you know, hear from him, um, see what his direction will be. I love, um, I quote it often, but the, the song Seasons uh, by Hillsong Worship, if you're not done working, God, I'm not done waiting. And that's been a really one of the anthems we've lived by for the last few years. And so that's, that's kind of where we're at. I love that. And I mean, I know Whitney and I can definitely relate to that because we had to make some of those decisions because her job at one point was a great job, but it was really keeping us from being able to do ministry as a team the way we wanted to. And the way God led us may not be the way he leads you, but I'd love for us as a church family to join them in praying for that clarity about their future and how to really be a team and, and, you know, use the gifts that God's given both of you to lead. And so Nathan, could you just share with us what have you learned through this? And, and how has your trust in God grown through this journey that you've been on? Yeah. You know, I, I think I've come to a place where I, I'm comfortable approaching God and asking him to move, asking him to do the impossible. I think for many years, I didn't feel like I was allowed to ask him for that. I think a lot of my prayers were just like, Lord, help me survive. Help me survive today. Help me survive the season. Help me to get through. Help me get past this. I realized I wasted too much of my life praying that, that prayer. You know, uh, and, and so now I'm just like, I can approach him, ask him to move in big ways, <laughs> ask him to do immeasurably more. I mean, I had, that verse had been so important to us for really three or four years now. I think it really started to click for us this year that, hey, we can approach him and ask him to do things that are, that are greater than I could create on my own. Yeah. So I it's really given that. me the confidence to do that. I love that. And so how would you challenge us? It's Christmas Eve. We're all facing circumstances. Yeah. And the reality is the circumstances we walked in facing, we're going to walk out facing them. Yeah. But the hope is that through this time, even facing unchanged circumstances, that we would be changed and we would approach those differently. So how would you challenge us? Yeah, I would, I would just say don't give up hope. Um, 
that phrase has so much meaning to us because the very first week I sat here in public church, and I think I was somewhere in the back center section, um, Todd Humbert was speaking, he's pastor of Greenhouse, and the very first phrase he said was, don't give up hope, and I wrote that down. And I don't even know how that pertained to everybody in his talk that day, but I know what it meant to me. Um, and so the word hope really had a, a new meaning for us as a family and one that we kind of held on to, not hope that God would change our circumstances to be the way that we would want them to be, uh, not that he would fix things, you know, make them pretty, put a bow on them, but really that our, our hope is that we don't have to walk through it alone, yeah. you know, and you don't have to walk through your circumstance alone. And I love it how, you know, we look at Psalm 23, he leads us through the valley. He doesn't leave us in the valley. He walks us through it. And so um, if you're there today, you know, don't, don't give up hope. Um, celebrate how he's been faithful in your past. Um, and I think just, just know that God does his best work in processes. Um, you know, God can, God can move and he can change in an instant. But sometimes we look for the instant so much so that we miss the process that he's doing and the process that he's working in our lives and our hearts. And so um, that would be my encouragement to you is don't rush the process. Sometimes we have to take, I have to take my hands off of it and just let him do the work and trust him and not to, not to try to put my hands on it so much. And so that would be my encouragement. Don't give up hope and just trust the process. Let him do the work. And so that's, that's really my heart, you know, yeah. for you guys. Um, and so even as we wrap it up, if that's where you're at tonight, we'd love to pray with you. Yeah, you know, good. as you know, we're going to sing a song here in a few minutes, sing a few songs, and I'm going to be in the back. Anybody from staff and our, our wives and our husbands are going to be in the back. If anybody's available, we would love to pray with you. If you, maybe you're here today and you're not a Jesus follower, you just need to take that step and say, you know, I, I, things look impossible, but God, I, I trust that you've done a work for me and I want to follow after you. If you want to take that step today, we would love to talk with you and pray with you. So don't hesitate to, to see me or see one of us in the back because we'd love to spend that time with you. That's awesome. And thank you, Nathan, for sharing. Um, I feel like it hits us right where we are, but it, it's a way forward for us to trust God and to not give up hope. So we have some special things planned for the rest of our time together. And so it's just a chance for us to continue to focus on the impossible circumstances we face, but yet even more focus on the God who does the impossible. So Nathan, yeah. would you just pray for the rest of our time yeah, together? I love. Let's pray. God, I just thank you so much that you are God of the impossible. God, when, when life can seem dark and bleak, God, none of it catches you by surprise. And so Lord, I just pray for everyone in this room who, who is facing impossible situations, that Lord, I just pray tonight would be a breakthrough of their trust that tonight would be a moment in their lives where they realize they can approach you and be honest, that they can pour out their hearts to you about what they're experiencing, God, because we know that you listen and you hear our cries. And so I pray that that would be healing to somebody in this room tonight. And that, God, if anybody doesn't know you, that they would take a step in following after you, that they would realize that your work for them is perfect and we don't have to strive to, to work for you. So, Lord change our hearts to, to, to look to you constantly, to not look at our circumstances, God, but to look at who you are and what you can do in our lives. And we thank you for that. Thank you for your love. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. We hope that you are encouraged, challenged, and reminded that following Jesus is not just a Sunday activity, but an every moment lifestyle. And if you took a step today in your journey of following Jesus, we would love to hear from you. So please send an email to katie at publicchurch.com. And if you enjoyed this video, please like it and subscribe to our channel so you never miss any future videos. And as always, you can connect with us online through our social media at a public church or through our website.